Hello, everybody. Welcome to another live demo with Etcher. My name is Noelia, and today I have with me Ian Finelli, and he is going to teach us a lot today about urban sketching and breaking your sketch down. But before we get started with that, um, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat, type question in all caps and your question following that. And I will either ask them to Ian if they are relevant to what he is doing. If not, I will save them for a Q&A at the end. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have free live demos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Fridays. And share this link with your friends so that they can join us as well. Um, but Ian, it's all you now. Thank you, Noelia. And hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me in my studio in Hoylake. It's lovely. I, I would say it's lovely to see you, but I can't see you. So I kind of, I hope you're there. <laughs> um, so if you, don't, if you don't know me, if you've not met me before, um, I'm a kind of a UK based artist. Um, I specialize in urban sketching, which basically means I go off on location and I draw and paint the kind of stuff that's in front of me. And what we're gonna do for you today as a demonstration is, and hopefully you've seen the image, we're going to do an old uh, fishing boat on a trailer, which is down on the marshes in Heswell, which is not far from where I live in the Northwest corner of England. So it's not quite an abandoned fishing boat, but it's one that's kind of been a little bit neglected. So it's quite rusty. And it's, it's the kind of typical thing that I would draw if I was on location. Now, obviously I'm not doing it on location because I'm in the studio and it's pitch black, it's dark outside, as you can probably see from behind me. So we have to, we have to work virtually, which is kind of typical of what we've all had to do this year. A lot of the time we've been working from photographs. So I'm going to do a demonstration in pen and watercolor. I'm going to be using quite a few of the materials that Etcher are very kindly sent to me. So I'm going to be using their brushes, I'm going to be using their pens, I'm going to be using their watercolour palettes as well. Because I've only got an hour, and you're welcome to stay with me for three hours if you want, but obviously, you know, <laughs> we've only got an hour. <laughs> I'm going to kind of fast track my process. So normally I would put the colour on kind of midway through, but I'm going to put the colour on at the end. Because if I put the colour on halfway through, we're going to waste about 20 minutes waiting for the paint to dry, which is really boring. So the colour is going to go on at the end. OK, um, and I'll show you all the um, materials that I'm going to be using as we go through. and I'll explain each of the steps as well. And as Noelia said before, please, guys, if you've got any questions, just please ask away. But before we do that, Noelia <clears throat> asked me the other day if we'd um, share a little sketchbook with you. So before we start, I'm going to just show you my latest sketchbook. And this is my Cornwall sketchbook. So I'm just going to flick through it with you now. OK, so these were all sketches that I did on location down in Cornwall um, a couple of months ago where I went down with my dear wife, Annette, and my little doggy, Elsa, who's a Labradoodle. And this is a place called Mevagissi which is a beautiful, beautiful harbour, below the saying. This is also Mevagessi, okay? And this, this is the kind of thing that I would typically do if I had three hours, but I haven't. I've only got one hour today, <laughs> less the time that I'm spending at the moment talking. So <laughs> it's going to be a very kind of quick, swift version of one of these. But this is typically what I do. So I draw it out first, focusing on the big shapes, then I go in with the, the colour and then put all the detail on, on top. So normally the painting would go on midway through and then the detail uh, or the fine line of work goes on top. So these are all the kind of the Cornish fishing villages and harbours that we went to. And my work is very much about trying to tell stories. So it's telling stories of the place. So when we were down in Cornwall, you notice these huge, big, fat seagulls that just come along and try and pinch your chips and your pasties. So they're everywhere. They're flying all around. Mm -hmm. So you try to make a big thing of these because they're part of the storytelling nature of what you're doing. Yeah. This is a place called Port Isaac. Now, if there's anybody out there who's a fan of the drama called Doc Martin, this is where it's filmed. It's filmed in Port Isaac, and this is the, the pub here where they often go to. And again, it's about noticing all the little things like the ropes and the netting and the seagulls and all the things that you typically see on location. Yeah. 
these, the, these boats specialize in catching lobsters. So these are all the little floats they have on the back of the boat. And when they submerge the lobster crates in the water, these floats are obviously to identify where they've submerged the crates. And it's, mm -hmm. I didn't realize why there were so many of them. Because all these boats have literally tens, 15, 20, 30 of them on the back. And it's just fascinating to see these things. It's the little things that you notice which are so interesting. This is also another gissy. So what we say it was just around the corner. Mm -hmm. So when I was trying to draw this, I practically got killed because I'm right in the middle of the road and all the cars are going past me. Getting quite oh frustrated. my gosh. You know? Yeah, urban sketching can be quite extreme at times. It can be a, a little bit dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> This is also Port Isaac. This is a different view. So um, this is kind of a sweep of the bay. So there's a lot more kind of space in this one, where some of the other ones are more kind of close up. Like this one, this is a place called Port Lynn. And this um, this is obviously a, a fishing boat that's going out catching catching um, lobsters again, because it's got all of these um, boys on the back. Mm -hmm. And then this boat here apparently goes out and catches crabs. You pardon the expression. But it's noticing all the little bits of detail, all the little bits of junk and all the kind of features that kind of settle at the bottom of the composition that you just find really interesting that you notice when you're, when you're sketching on location. It's just fasc fascinating to, to go out there and just draw these things. Yeah. And, and then this is Paul Perro. This is the last one. With a little seagull in, Cornell cool Nigel. <laughs> that is my... Cornwall sketchbook. Oh, that's lovely, Ian. We have a lot of people in the chat saying that they are gorgeous, beautiful, just comments all over. Oh, thanks, guys. Right, I'm just going to zoom this down a little bit, get it a little bit closer. Awesome. And while Ian does that so that we can see his sketch really well, I just wanted to remind you all that we also have a feedback survey that we would really appreciate if you could fill out. Um, and I'm putting the link for that on the chat. And I've also included the link for the reference image in the chat as well, but I'll put it in there again, just in case. Okay, how's, how's that? Does that look okay? Uh, I think it does. Brilliant. Right. So what I'm going to do then, everybody, is I'm going to do um, an urban sketch of um, an old fishing boat down on the marshes, a little bit like what we've just been looking at. Hopefully you've got reference to the image, because the first thing that I try and do before I start, before I make any marks on the page, is I just place the pens on the page to kind of break up some of the shapes in front of me. So as I'm, I'm looking at the image on my iPad now of the fishing boat on the trailer, and that's the kind of the top of the boat, and that's the kind of bottom of the boat, and that's the front. And then the trailer will come down like this, and then the little, the little wheel will go there. But I can't, I can't put the wheel on with the pens because the pens won't bend. So I've just got to kind of imagine it goes there. But just by placing those pens on the page, I'm just kind of visualizing how the main shapes are going to fit within the parameters of the page. Okay. And it, it's just a, a really useful thing to do. So before you make any marks, you're just kind of trying to visualize how things are going to fit. And it's it's just quite a good little exercise. It only takes a few minutes. And I, I try and encourage the, 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 the students that come and work with me on location to, just to try and do this. Um, and it doesn't take it doesn't take too long, because the danger would be you might just start off sketching something in the corner, and you get quite frustrated because you've just made a few mistakes, you know, before you have even properly started. So doing this is just a, a useful little way of just visualising how things are going to go. And then the problem is you take the pens off and you can't remember where they go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, right. Quick question: What size is your sketchbook? Great, great question. This is an this is an A3 sketchbook. It's it's Fabriano. It's hot press. It's three hundred grams, so it's a good it's a good medium medium weight. 
and A3 is 40 centimetres by 30 centimetres. So it's, it's quite a big, it's quite a big sketchbook. And this is this is the size that I always use. So all my sketches always are generally this kind of size. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start sketching out with one of these. This is a, a Tombow brush pen and it's, it's dual tipped. So it's got the brushy part here, which I'll be using later on. But I'm initially going to use the fine liner part because the fine liner part acts very much like a pencil, it's like a kind of softened pencil. So I'm just going to sketch it out now. So do you remember I put those lines on? There was one there, one there, one there, and then one down here. Okay, so I'm just going to sketch it out. So there's the shape of the boat. Is that is that showing up okay now, Elliot? Can everybody see it all right? I can see it. And if yeah. you can't see it, please let me know in the chat. Okay. But it's a very light um, way of adding the lines, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very light. Because all I'm doing at this stage is just sketching the big shapes. Okay, I'm not focusing on detail. That'll all come later on. And it's really how this shape fits in relation to the rest of the the page. And this is the trailer down here. And it's got this really cool like double double tire here, which is really good. I love this. So I'm holding the pen really loosely as well at the moment. Because I just find when you hold the pen quite loosely, you just got a lot more control of the sketch. Mm -hmm. um, and is that the reason why you're holding your pencil or your pen from the very tip or the end of it? Yeah, exactly, that's exactly it. So I'm just fine by holding it at the top. If I held it further down, all the movements are much slower and much more deliberate. And the marks on the page are probably going to be too heavy because I want them all to be very light at this stage. Mm -hmm. It's got like a little ladder at the back here, which is so cool. And what's great about sketching something like this as a subject? Mm -hmm. Is there so much? So it just throws up so many really interesting shapes. I mean, you know, this, this is all the kind of the, the, the mast and the rigging, and you know, there's all sorts of stuff going on here. I've got a clue what half of it is because I'm not really into boats. Well, I'm into boats to draw, but I'm not into boats to sail. So half mm -hmm. of this stuff I don't know. So all I'm seeing is shapes. I mean, check <laughs> this out. Look, at the, look at the ropes here, the rope, and then there's a big knot in it as well, and it all kind of whizzes down. It's just fantastic. So interesting. And then here we've got some like smaller boats that can actually behind. And these just give a really nice sense of scale. Oh, thanks, love. My dear wife just come in with a cup of tea for me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. I can see where the how it you can see the the shapes already coming through though. Yeah, but these ones behind, so down on these marshes, there's loads and loads of boats. And these ones in the background just give this sense of sense of scale really, which is which is quite cool. And then there's another boat sticking up. Yeah. And for people who are joining us, um, really quick, the reference image in the description of the video is not the one Ian is using. We switched it up last minute, so it's the one I am putting in the chat. Um, so make sure you grab the link from the chat. And if it's not working for you, please let me know. Ian, uh, what Tombow pen are you using? Could you okay, 
this is this is called and N65. Okay, so the Tombos, I've got a whole range of them here. Now the Tombos, they produce, I think, over a hundred different varieties, but they all I only tend to use the grey ones, so I use the, the black and the warm grey and the cool grey and the two light greys and the medium grey. And if anybody's interested, I can email you, Noelia, these specific numbers. Because mm -hmm. they're all numbers you see, rather than they don't have like descriptions of the colours because they're all kind of grey. But I mean, there's certain numbers like that's N95. And I'm going to be using these a little bit later on, but I'm going to be using the brushy part. So at the moment, I'm just using the fine liner part to sketch things out. But these these are water soluble, so it means that when you put watercolor paint on top, they will mix a little bit with the kind of grey tones that you can establish. Mm -hmm. And that is really kind of step, that's kind of step one, I've kind of done now. So that's just kind of like sketching the outline very, very loosely. Mm -hmm. So we've got the horizon line coming along here at the back. And then we've just got a little bit of the hill in the background. And this is, this is North Wales, because we live quite, quite close to Wales. Okay, and that's that's step one. So step two, I'm going to now use these lovely pens that my my good friends from Etcha very kindly sent me. Okay, and and the, these are permanent fine liners. So that the big difference is that these pens that I've just been using, the Tombow, are water soluble which means when you put water on, they will dissolve a little bit, not completely, they're not watercolor pens, but they're water, -soluble pen. they're water soluble pens, which means that when you put the water on, they will fade a little bit, some of it will lift off with the water, but these are permanents, these will not mix at all. So these are great now to put on for the next stage, because the next thing I'm gonna do is start adding more, more detail, to this very kind of rough, rough sketch. This is just marking out the outlines, and now I'm just going to go a lot deeper with the observation. And I've got a point, I've got a point two, and I've got a point, a point three. And I'm really, really excited to use these. So this is just kind of going over those initial shapes that I put down. And just, just kind of adding, adding more detail to it, really. And you're still using the same very light yeah. Sketching technique. Yeah, just just holding it really kind of loosely. And the great thing about using hot pressed paper, which I mentioned before, is that because it's really smooth, it just enables you know the pen just to flow really nicely across across the page. So you can just like you know you can just take a line. For a walk, and it's just, it's just it's just great fun. So you've got all, all these like amazing knots here that are all kind of wrapped around themselves, just throwing up loads of really interesting shapes. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what I just enjoy. I just enjoy you know noticing things, but also kind of like inventing, you know, inventing by kind of exaggerating stuff as well. So although I'm, I'm kind of copying the patterns that are being thrown up at the moment by all of these ropes, I'm kind of exaggerating some parts as well. Because that's kind of what you do if you're on location, because you you know you see things a lot more clearly on mm -hmm. location. So how do you choose um, what things to exaggerate? That's a great question. It's all about, for me, it's all about telling stories. You know, it's, it's telling the story of what you think is important. So, for example, the rope here, which I'm making a big thing of at the moment, is a really big storytelling part of the picture. Because you know, boats need ropes. Ropes are really important. I mean, you don't. I don't often know what the ropes are doing, but I know that they're a big kind of visual feature in the composition. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of it's telling the story of the things that you feel are kind of significant. And also it's like the patterns as well. You know, the ropes, when you look really carefully, the ropes, it's not just two lines. It's got this amazing pattern inside, which I just think is 
is really interesting. These pens are great, by the way. I'm really loving these pens. They're so cool. So you see how those, those first shapes that I put on, they just kind of enabled me now to go in a lot, a lot more carefully with the observation. And I kind of know I kind of know where they're meant to go because because I've got those initial shapes in place. I can look inside those shapes and start noticing, you know, the, the details and, and, the, and the different the different lines and the patterns they throw up and the direction in which they go and which one's behind which. You can see that that beam there goes in front of the, this one, but in reality, it's probably meant to go the other way around. It doesn't matter because this is you know this is the art of of drawing on location and kind of inventing as well as you go along. And you know, using your imagination and just you know, just changing things, just to make it fun. Yeah. All the time, I'm just trying to keep it as as interesting and as as fun for me as, as possible. So, why do you use uh, the Tombos for your initial sketch rather than a pencil? Okay, that, that's a, again, that's a really good question. If you use a pencil, I don't think you commit yourself as much to the drawing. I don't think you, I mean, and this is a personal thing for me, I'm not talking about anybody else, but for me, I, I wouldn't be as committed. I think if you use a pen, even if it's a brush pen, which, you know, is kind of semi purpose I think you commit yourself to it a lot more. So you take more risks. I think if you're, if you're just going to use a pencil and in one hand you've got your pencil and in the other hand you've got your rubber i think you've got that little safety net in the other hand and i think sometimes you probably don't take as many risks i think you just play play a little bit too safe and then you might as a consequence just not draw it accurately knowing that you can always rub it out but you can't do that with a pen you know you have to try or well, not try but you have to think a lot harder and, and that's just a personal thing for me because I know in the past I've used pencils and I think because you know that you know you can rub it out you, you perhaps just don't look as hard or or think as, as carefully but I think if you use a pen it's a very you know it's a very deliberate line isn't it you know there's kind of no there's no going back yeah and I I just I like that I like that commitment right from the beginning you know you've got to you're not not got to get it right because you know it's not about getting it right but you've got to try and you've got to think really really hard right from the word go because i think the the first stage for me those initial shapes and lines that you put down they are the most important because in some ways everything kind of comes off that so all the work i'm doing at the moment is all based on those very first lines that i put down mm -hmm. you know, all the little patterns that I'm focusing on and channeling at the moment, you know, they're all very much based on those first things that went in. Right. So yeah, good, really good question though. But you see, when I'm when I'm doing workshops, a lot of the, the students that come along, you know, would rather start off with a pencil. And that's absolutely fine. There's just no way I'm ever gonna stop them from from using the pencil but generally speaking once they've done a few workshops they they prefer to use a um, brush pen because they kind of appreciate that you know it's, it is more of a commitment so so far i've only really used the point two i've not bothered with any of the other pens at the moment but once i've got these initial lines in I'll start using some thicker lines just to strengthen some parts of the sketch. Do you um, change to a different pen for that? Yeah, I'll use, at the moment I'm using the point two, but I'll probably use the point three soon um, just to strengthen certain parts. And I've also got some of your black brushy pens as well, which I'm, I'm going to use just to get some dark tones in. So 
this is the, the smaller boat that's just behind here. What I love about these subjects as well, they just they just throw so, so much junk lying around. Because I mean, all these boats, a lot of them have been moved for you know, 20 or 30 years. And there's all sorts of kind of like junk that just attracts itself to it, like these, these old trailers and things like that. And they just throw up so many really interesting shapes. I mean, I haven't got a clue what half this stuff is, but I just know it looks interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good tip. Especially if you're urban sketching, I think. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to know half the time what it is that, you know, you, you do. Well, no, you need to know what you're doing, but you don't need to always know the name of the things that you're drawing. I mean, I especially find that, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing vehicles and I'm doing the engine of a vehicle or something. All I'm, all I'm focusing on is shape, tone, colour, all the kind of artistic values. I mean, I can't name half the things that are in the engine because that's just not my thing and I don't need to. It's, it's not how your mind, you know, it's not how your mind is working. You, your mind is working in a, in a certain kind of way. Mm -hmm. And Ian, if you had um, more time, would you normally add the watercolor before the fine liner? No. So, so if, if I if I had more time. This is exactly how I would be doing it at this stage. This is this is my normal step two. But the next stage, I would put the watercolour paint on. But what I'm going to have to do instead is I'm going to have to put a tone on and strengthen some of the lines. So, for example, that's that's the kind of outline sketch. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use one of your, your brushing pens, which is this one here. I'm going to start pinging some of the dark tones. Now, I wouldn't normally, I wouldn't normally do this at this stage, but I'm doing it now because I want to put the colour on right at the very, very end. Now this is the light grey brush pen and I'm just using it to blend in to get some tone around here. We get some nice dark shadows in here. I love this brush by the way. So good. And then this is the Tombow. So I'm just using this as a kind of blending tool. And that's going back to the Tombow, right? Yeah, so I'm using a combination of yours, your Vietcha. This is the Vietcha brush pen. And I'm just using the Tombow as a way of, of you know, blending, blending in the tone. So I'm just picking up some nice dark tonal contrasts now. Which, again, I wouldn't normally be doing this. I'd be doing this on top of the paints normally. But it, 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 the outcome will be the same. You know, because often you can, you know, you can vary your outcome. And often you can still achieve almost like the same, the same results. <laughs> and you are adding that where the shadows would be? Yeah, what I want, because what I want to do at the moment is just, just give the whole thing a little, a little sense of depth, you know, so it looks like it's a solid thing, you know, sitting, sitting on a trailer. Yeah. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be floating too much. This is the this is the cool grey now. So I'm using the cool grey and the warm grey. I'm just kind of playing playing around with the two of them at the moment. How do you go, um, or how do you decide when you use the cool one and where you use the warm one? Well, normally I think about it, but because I've only got an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really thinking. I'm just, I'm just sticking it on. You know, the, 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 the thing about the, the, the cool and the warm, because there's no real sense of depth in this. You know, things on the same kind of visual plane. It's mm -hmm. just to make it visually interesting. That, that's all it is at this stage. It's, you know, it's not trying to push things back or move things forward. 
I mean, you can do that if it was more of a regular like street scene or something, you know, I would, I would definitely be using it for that benefit, for that purpose. But at this stage, you know, it's just um, just to make things visually interesting. That's all. And you're adding some to the background as well. Yeah. So this is the. This is like the mountains in the background. These are the Welsh mountains, which are probably about, about three or four miles across the marshes. These are all the marshes here. So this used to be the river. It used to be the River Dee. Well, it still, it still is the River Dee, but there's no water there anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's still, it's still the River Dee. It's still a river, but it's, it's just all marshed up. Um, and this is the kind of thing that happens, you know, as the, as the tide changes over the years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to go in with the, the point one. I'm just going to do a little bit of hatching now. And now this part of the stage, this, this would normally be one of the last things that I do, this is kind of getting onto the detail stage. But I'm doing it a lot earlier on in the process. So I'm, I'm kind of, what I'm trying to do, and, and this is great, and I often do this as a demonstration, I kind of try and get everything in before the colour goes on. Because the problem will be, once the colour goes on, I can't, <laughs> I can't do any more because everything's going to be soaking wet. So I'm doing a lot of work now <clears throat> that normally would be done. The, at the very very end. Right. So this this pen now this is this is one of your etcher pens and this is this is a point five. So this is what I was saying before you know about, about strengthening some of the lines. And you can introduce I find it's great to introduce tone work just by using a hatching technique here where you're just going up and down really quickly and it just adds like another another layer of texture to, to the sketch. Yeah. And do you do the hatching in a specific direction or how do you go about that? Yeah, I kind of I generally do it this way, you know, just so, so going diagonally across from top right to bottom left. But, but sometimes, you know, you can do it if you want to, you know, exaggerate the contours of something. So, for example, we can do it in this direction, kind of going up this way, you know, if you want to emphasize the shape of a particular object. So you mm -hmm. said in this direction here. But I never do what's called, you know, cross hatching. You know, you go that way and then you go that way. I, yeah. I never do that. And I know some artists do do it and it looks amazing, but it's just not something that works for me. I, I just, I don't like it. Gotcha. It feels right here in my particular sketches. And it's, it's all just personal, just personal stuff as well. <laughs> Wow. For people in the chat, um, I've added a new link to the description with the reference image. I've also included it in the chat as well. All you need to do is click on the link, which takes you to a Google Drive image. Please let me know if you can see it and I'll try a new link again. Um, but with that being said, if you want to learn more about um, Ian's technique. He will be having a mini workshop with us on Saturday, January 16th at 9 a.m. LA time. And that'll be on demystifying urban scenes in watercolor. Um, and a lot of people were asking actually if it'll be boats again. Will it be boats again, Ian? Well, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up actually, Noelia, because I'd like to just talk about that for a few minutes because um, what we're going to do. Um, in January, when we do the mini the mini workshop, we'll have obviously longer. It won't be it won't be as quick as this, and it's going to be it's going to be a similar subject. It's actually going to be a photograph from exactly the same location. It's a different boat, but we've photographed only like a couple of 
a couple of meters away from here. Um, and it's on a, it's a boat that's on its side and it's on the mudflats. So it's a really, it's a really interesting subject. It's gonna, it's it's gonna be you know really cool to do. Um, it's it's probably a subject I prefer to do than this one, but obviously I've done this one as the as a demonstration. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be the same, same location. It's gonna be down on the Heswall, Heswall Marshes, and it's an old abandoned. I mean, this is this isn't this is not an abandoned fishing boat. This one's still active, but I think the other one has been there for years, so it's really kind of old and it's on its side, and it's really nice how the perspective kind of comes across. So yeah, it'd be really cool, really good fun. I'm so looking forward to it. And is that more like a brush pen again? Yeah, this is this is one of your brush pens again now. So I've used the thin one and then this is the thick one. So this is kind of behaving very much like the Tombow ones. But yours, I guess they're permanent, they're not water soluble, which is why I'm kind of using them more so than, than the Tombow ones, because these won't lift off when I put the, the colour on. Right. I'm actually I'm keeping an eye on the on the clock because I'm, I'm I reckon it's going to take me about ten minutes to do the painting. <laughs> so I'm going to give myself till quarter two to get as much drawing done as I can, and then I can talk a little bit about the watercolor paints. And it's yeah. probably take me ten minutes to put the color on. Adding that with the pens though definitely helps um, with the depth. And the different yeah, it, it, it does. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And I'm assuming you're the way you add on the ink with the pens, your loose technique helps you get that very smooth gray. Yeah, it does. Application. It does. Yeah, and, and the other thing I find as well, Noel, is, is just by working quite loosely, it energizes your sketch. You know, there's kind of a lot, of, a lot of energy to it, which I like. I like that kind of, I like the looseness because it just feels, it feels energized, it feels lively, it just, you know, it just makes you want to do it, really. You know, I, I don't like drawing really painstakingly and really slowly. It's just, it just doesn't work for me. And I, I know it works for some people. Some people you know, do work very carefully. I just tend to stick stuff on and you know, throw stuff on, especially when the paint. But it's just it's just how I've always done it. And it's just it's just kind of what works for me. And the amazing thing about creativity and art is that we all just do it differently, don't we? We all see the world in a different way. And I just think that's that's so cool. Yeah. I think that's really cool, um, or that's something that really shows by doing this work, these workshops and live demos. Afterwards, I see all the people that post on our Facebook page or that they just share it and tag us with the hashtag and yeah. seeing how everyone has their own take. I just enjoy all that variety. That's what, that's what I love as well. I look back to when I, when I run a workshop, I look at what all the students have done. I know, okay, they, they, you know, they, they followed my, my techniques and they followed my method, but the results are always so not so different, but different. You know, different in a really good way. That you know, yeah. the people have learned and taken on board the things that I'm trying to teach, but they've applied it, you know, to their own their own style or the, their own way of seeing things. Because mm -hmm. a, a lot of what I'm teaching is about you know looking and discovering what's what's out there. And the things that I feel are important, like I was mentioning before, you know, about these ropes, you know, some people might not find that particularly interesting. So they'll find something else, but they'll still apply it, you know, to the same process, but they'll just concentrate on, on something, something else, you know, something that perhaps I, I don't feel is important. And that's, that's what's amazing about it, you know, that we all have a different vision of the world. Yeah. And I just love that. So with that being said, we would love to see your takes on um, the your drawing sketches from today's live 
demo. So don't forget to share it on social media and tag us with the hashtag at your mini workshop. And that'll also just sign you up for a um, giveaway that we will have each month. Okay, so I'm gonna start thinking about putting some of the color on soon, not, not just yet. I'm gonna put a little bit of the grass in because these marshes, the grass is really quite thick. So I need to do some kind of suggestion of the, the texture in the grass. It's just mesmerizing to watch you do all those <laughs> little lines. Uh, hatching, I, I find, is it's, it's just a really good technique that you can just practice. You know, it's it's not it's not difficult. It's it's an easy thing to do, and it's something that will make a huge difference to your kind of you know your, your visual just your visual repertoire. You know, the range of tools that you've got at your disposal to create the images that you want to create. And, um, you know, it's something that's just kind of worth, worth practicing sometimes. Yeah. But, you know, you don't have to practice it on your drawings. You can just practice it as a, as a kind of separate, you know, separate exercise, really. Right. It's lovable. I mean, if you look at the photograph, you can just see there's, there's like so much garbage and rubbish down here at the bottom. Or there's a bottle, I think there's a beer bottle there as well. There's probably all sorts of things. That you probably don't you probably don't really want to know what they are, half of them. <laughs> do you usually incorporate all that in your drawings or do you choose what to put in and what to take out? Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, you, you do, you, you edit, don't you? You edit things in, you edit things out. So there's yeah, that you wouldn't draw everything, but you would you would draw things that you feel are you know significant. So if, if this marsh area is just full of you know junk and, and stuff, you know, you definitely do a suggestion of of some of the bits, you know, these kind of random shapes at the bottom here, because they're just they're telling the story of the place. And I'd like to spend longer doing these, but unfortunately. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to think about colour. And by the okay. way, people are saying it's really awesome, Ian. Right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to wreck it now with colour. Because <laughs> I would never normally do this much drawing, you know, before the colour goes on. Because the colour, as I said before, you know, goes on very, very very early in the process so we never normally have this much detail this much draw again but, um when i when i put the paint on i'm not going to obviously paint the whole scene because it's not it's not a watercolor painting it's an urban sketch with with color applied so the color is only really going to focus on on this boat and this boat and the trailer um, and this sky will all just be left white. I might do a little bit of a suggestion of the kind of mud at the bottom, but um, there won't be, it won't all be painted. It will just be a, it will just be a suggestion. But you know what? I haven't got a clue what's going to happen. And that's the great thing about painting say, stage. You just, you just make it up as you go along. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I love that. That is just a oh, fun way of approaching it. Right, okay, so these are the brushes and these are my Etcher brushes, which my good friends from Etcher Studio very kindly let me use. 
for today. So we've got these, these are the flats. So I use flats all the time. I call I call these pastry brushes. This is a half inch pastry brush, and this is a three-eighths of an inch pastry brush. So I'll be using those at the beginning. This is one of those fan brushes, which is a bit like that, but it's much, much softer. It's not much softer to approach to it because obviously it fans, it fans out. So the fibers are not as tightly packed together as these ones. This is a little bit like a rigger. This is just a fine one. So we do lots and lots of drawing with this. And then these are kind of thicker ones. These are, I guess, like round, they're not quite round headed ones, but they're similar to some of the round headed ones that I normally use. And these are great for just describing specific areas. So if you want to kind of paint, say this, this part here, you, know, you can just drag it across like that. It just gets some really nice washes yeah. on top. Yeah. These are these are the paints. These are Winsor Newton paints that I'm going to be using. And this amazing little palette is by Etcher. So these are the colours. And I'll just go through the colours. I'm not going to be using all of these colours, but I'll just show you what the ones that I've got. That's Prussian blue, Windsor blue. Ultramarine blue, which is definitely getting used. Cerulean blue, which I'm definitely going to use. Alicia and Crimson. Transparent orange, which I'm going to use, because transparent orange and cerulean, if you mix those two together, you get the most amazing rust. So all of this is going to be done with cerulean and transparent orange. That's the only plan I've got in my head at the moment. That's Cadmium Red Deep. Burnt Sienna, which I'll probably use. Indian Yellow. Black, white. Green gold, which are quite fancy for the marshes. Mm -hmm. Look green, and that's cobalt turquoise light, which I'm going to use as well because that's a really cool, that's like a sexy colour. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay, so they're the colours. Okay, some of them are going to come out to play. Some of them are not going to come out to play. And here we go. So exciting. This is what it's all about. So I'm going to start off with transparent orange. Oh my God, look at that. Gorgeous. Uh, yeah. With a little bit of cerulean. And this, this just makes, this is a rust. This just makes the most gorgeous rust colour. I'm just going to sweep this around a little bit here. This palette's great because I've just got this palette in my hand here. And say I've just got it in my hand, and I'm just pinging away around the colours. Okay, now cobalt turquoise the lights is happening now for this part of the boat. And this is mixing slightly, you know, some of the grey tones that went on before. I don't mind that. Do you clean your brush in between colors? Or yeah, yeah, I'm, I've, I've got a big tub here. So I'm just kind of washing it, washing it all away. This is ultramarine, this one. Wow, look at that, gorgeous. So I've mixed a bit of white in here as well, just to get a really strong colour. Look at that. Stunning. <laughs> what I'll just get a, a pastry brush and I'll just fade this out a little bit. So this is really, really thick. <clears throat> Use the little rigger. I'm just going to get some grey on the go now. So I'm just going to use this little tray here inside. I've got like a little spare tray there, just to get some grey tones going. And people are loving how the paint mixes with the Tombow brush fading. What it does, the great thing about it is, is that 
because it's water soluble, it will just lift ever so slightly. So the two of them are really compatible because you know you, you can you can get um, alcohol based pens which are permanent, and I just find they they don't they just don't mix particularly well. You know with the um, with the watercolor, you mm -hmm. want something that's actually water soluble because the two are just they're just so compatible that they just work really well together. Look at, look at these brushes. These brushes are so good. I'm glad you're liking them. No, they're brilliant. Love them. Right, now I need to do the boat. I've not done the boat yet. So the boat is going to be ultramarine blue. I'm not going to do it like a flat ultramarine because I want to try and you know create a sense of shape to it as well to you know to make it look three dimensional. Mm -hmm. And you don't you let those little splashes happen, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just want I want the whole thing in it to look quite energized, and I want it to be like a kind of energy to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the splashes, splashes are good. I love, I love splashes. Just adds kind of like charm and it makes it, you know, it just makes it look handmade as well, which is kind of what you want. It's got that handmade kind of quality to it. Yeah, I never thought about it that way. And for people in the chat interested in joining in on his mini workshop on January uh, 16th, which is a Saturday, you if you can't make it, we will be sending you a recording of the mini workshop so that you can do it at your own pace as long as you sign up for it. And I will be sharing the link to his mini workshop in the chat. And it's only $5 and 50 cents. <laughs> Pedro Lureiro is saying he just got here in time for the color phase and he is loving it. Oh, fantastic. That's great. Great to hear. Yes, yeah, so I've really tried to make this part, you know, quite kind of rusty and, and cerulean and that orange are just amazing for that. The transparent orange and cerulean mix those together, they just give a gorgeous kind of rusty. Yeah. Rusty. I like how you also keep adding little details with that fine liner. Yeah, this fine line is amazing. This, it, it, it's really good because some of these some of these brushes, they they don't hold that much paint, so you have to keep dipping it back in all the time. But this 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 little guy is great. He just keep, keeps on going. You see, he just keeps going and going and going, and that's really important because when you're outside working on location, you know you, you get a bit cold sometimes, or you haven't got that much time. 
So any little tools like this, which are really good for speeding up the process, I think they're great. You see this, look at this, it just keeps going and going and going, it doesn't want to give up. And that's the sign, sign of a good brush. It just keeps going on, yeah. it doesn't, doesn't run out really quickly. Because some, some brushes you get, you know, and obviously there's a whole range of products you can get on the market, but so, some of them just don't hold that much paint. So you have to keep constantly dipping, you know, dipping it back in the palette. And you don't always want to do that. You know, sometimes you just want to crack on and get things done. Again, it's just, this is just to energize the, the sketch, just to make it you know, look like it's got a bit more, a bit more life to it. Yeah. And you don't really stick to a certain color palette, do you? No, I limit, I mean, I do limit the colors. It's a good question that I do, I do limit the colors. I don't use, you know, all the colors. I think I've only used about five colors here. Mm -hmm. I, I, what I tend to do is bounce those colours around the picture. So, for example, the cobalt turquoise light is there, there, there. It's a lot stronger there, and it's up there. And then the cerulean blue is there and there. And it, it was down there, but it's now mixed in with the transparent orange. So I, I'm just kind of bouncing colours, the same colours, kind of all over the picture, really. And it just kind of unifies things together. It gives it a nice, a nice balance. Um, yeah. And is your transparent orange Winsor Winsor and Newton or what brand is it? Yeah, no, all all the all the paints are um, Winsor and Newton. Yeah, I, I never and I never really kind of mix brands. Um, but no, I, I tend to just use Winsor and Newton paints now. I mean, I've, I've, I've kind of used other ones occasionally. Um, and another brand I sometimes use are, are old old Holland, and they're um, they're they're really good as well. I kind of prefer, I just, I just prefer Wings and Newtons. But it's like it's like anything, isn't it? It's kind of what, what you get used to, really. Yeah. You know, some some things you don't mind you know, experimenting with. Um, but other things I think you just need to kind of stick to something that you you're familiar with and you, and you kind of know and you know how it's going to behave because <clears throat> a lot of the time I'm just going to use this. I forgot to mention this, this is like a little mixing palette here. I'm going to use this now because some of these get a little bit, a little bit wet. So this is really cool to have. Sorry, I forgot what I was saying then. I was going to say something. I can't remember what it was. I got this. Oh, I know. With your materials. Yes, using the same materials. Um, yeah. Well, not always the same, but you know, similar ones. You don't want to change things. I think too much because. A lot of the time, if I'm if I'm teaching, I kind of need to know you know what the outcome is going to be in order to explain to people you know what's what's going to happen. And if I don't know myself what's going to what's going to happen because I'm experimenting while I'm teaching, I'm going to look a bit stupid if, if I try and explain. Look, well now we're going to do this, and then something completely different happens. So yeah, you, you have to kind of rein yourself in a little bit and not experiment too much because you need to be in control of the outcome of what's you know, what's going, to, what's going to take place. Right, yeah, that makes sense. And could you remind us really quick what sketchbook you are using? Yeah, this is a Fabriano. It's three, 300 grams. Uh, it's Fabriano hot press. Um, and I can't really put much more color on that now. I'd like to do a little bit more drawing. So I'm just going to use the brush pens. I'm just going to add a little bit more tone work to it. That's fine. If you want to wait as well, I can ask you a few questions and then we can jump back into it if you would like. No, that, that's fine. You, you ask me some questions and I'll, I'll just carry on sketching. I'm, I'm okay. I can, I'm quite happy chatting and drawing at the same time. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, how much do you spend painting on location? 
okay so so when i'm when i'm working typically say i'm working by myself i'm, I'm doing my own my own thing and i'm not i'm not teaching the painting stage typically would take about 10 minutes so the initial stage when i'm sketching the big shapes out that will take maybe five minutes and then the the next stage when I'm putting the medium shapes on that will take maybe 10 minutes and the painting takes 10 minutes but then you've got to wait for it to dry but then the the detail part that takes like well over an hour because mm -hmm. just such there's just such a lot you know to, to put in yeah so the painting doesn't take it doesn't take that long because I don't want to overdo it you know I don't want to paint everything I just want to paint you know the bits that I feel need to be painted so for example all this white space around here is important because it, it just kind of lets the picture breathe yeah you know, if i painted that green if i took that green further out it would take away from the picture you know you just because you're just populating the center parts of the image really because that's the bit that is where the focal point is that's the bit that you know you want to draw people's attention to Mm hmm Yeah. That makes sense. Um, how did you develop your quirky style or have you always drawn things like that? Uh, wow. Is that is that your question or is that somebody else's? This is a Margaret Webb's question. Okay. Well, you see, I don't think, and, and, and people have asked me this a lot, I didn't think, Margaret, I've got a style. Because I just draw exactly what's in front of me in the way which I feel is the right way to do, and, and I, I don't I don't do anything you know in a kind of like a, a way which is is like a stylization. It's just what comes natural to me. So I I kind of like detail. I like bright colours. I like to be quite splashy, but they're, they're not stylistic things. They just they kind of how how it is for me. It's how I I kind of see things. Um, but having, in answer to your question, I, I've always drawn and I've, I've always kind of sketched cityscapes and landscapes. And I've always done it quite quickly and I've always had a kind of funny relationship with paint and colour because I like the, the colour and the paint have a life of its own. And I've always held a pen at the top like this, so I'm, I'm kind of moving around quite quickly. So I suppose in answer to your question, I've, I've kind of always done it this way. But I don't know quite know how it's developed. It's probably just the easiest way for me to, to draw, really. It's, amazing. it's the most natural, obvious way of doing it. I don't like to do things slowly. I get bored really quickly. So I like to kind of keep it as exciting and as interesting for me. So I suppose this style has just developed as a way of just keeping things, keeping things interesting. Yeah. I love that. And by the way, um, people are um, complimenting your sketch a lot. They, um, Rick then said the fixture is looking phenomenal. Oh, it's lovely. So nice. And he also asked if you could talk about your experience with the Etcher products. Was it your first chance use, to use them today? Okay. Now, I've used the pens before because I've been practicing with the pens. Now, the thing about the etcher pens is they are exactly like the pens that I would normally use. So in some ways, going forward for me, there's no reason why I can't use these pens again and again and again, because they are just, they're, they're achieving exactly what I would normally want to achieve with the pens. Mm -hmm. And the same thing really applies with the, with the brushes as well. You know, all the brushes I've used have done exactly kind of what I, what I wanted. They're just a little bit different, but they're not significantly different. And that's the thing about products or art products. You know, no one's going to come along and invent, reinvent the wheel with a brush or with a pen. Mm -hmm. Because pens and brushes are all going to do very, very similar jobs. You know, you just kind of get used to working with a certain one. But these brushes and these pens have been brilliant for me today. And, um, you know, I would definitely use them again and again and again. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not just saying that to be nice. Because if they, if they didn't if they didn't work, you know, you, I, I'd know I'd know straight away. And trust me, I've been asked to use a lot of products over the years, and, and some of them can be quite quite challenging. 
But I think you know you've, you've got to kind of be true, you know, true to yourself, and just use the things that you know are going to kind of achieve, you know, what it is you're looking to achieve in, 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 your, in your artwork. Yeah. And people are saying it's beautiful. They love your vibrancy and color values. And I could not agree more with them. Oh, thank you. Okay, well, I, I can't really do a massive amount more to this now because it's kind of, it's all a bit wet. And I will, I will do more work on this. I'll, get, I'll kind of get it finished up tomorrow. And everything's dry and I can start adding a lot more detail and texture to it and then what I'll do I'll post it on my Instagram account so if anybody follows me on Instagram you'll be able to see it on my Instagram account so I'll post it I'll also email it to you as well earlier so you can stick it out there for people as well I'll get awesome. it finished for, for up tomorrow yeah do you mind sharing your Instagram account with us now yeah so it's 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 just Ian Fennelly just all one word, lowercase. So in awesome. fact, it is my, my Instagram account. And did you, do you know, no, earlier, I mean, I'm plugging, I'm plugging something here, but do you know I've just had a book published? I've Could you repeat that? I've just published a book of urban sketching. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, so... Again, if you go on my Instagram accounts and go on the link tree, or just, just go on the link in my bio that takes you to link tree, and then it takes you to the site where you can you can order it, and it's just full of my full of my sketches. It's all the kind of stuff that I do on location, and I'll send you I'll send you the link to that as well if that's okay. Yeah, cool. That's perfect. Um, and I've shared in the chat Ian's. Um, name on Instagram so be sure to check him out and go to his link tree and check out his book um, and if you want to do a little bit more with him don't forget to sign up for his upcoming mini workshop on Saturday January 16th I'll include that link in the chat as well and like I said before we would love to see your artwork see even if it's not too to work, share it on social media and tag us with Okay, well, I, I can't really do much more to that now, I think, because um, it's all a bit wet. And if mm -hmm. you try and use your fine liners on top of the paints, you'll soon quickly realize they just, they, don't, <laughs> they, just, they just run out straight away. Yeah. Well, it looks lovely, Ian, and People from all over the place are saying that they love your colors, they love your color combos, they would love to see your books and your drawings, so make sure you check out his Instagram. Um, they're just loving it all around. Oh, thank you. So can I just thank everybody for, for joining us, and I hope, I hope you've enjoyed it. And it's, it's kind of been quite quick, you know, trying to do what I normally do in two and a half hours in one hour, and I've kind of reversed the process. But what I'm going to probably do tomorrow, when this is dry, I'll probably just tighten things up a little bit because I want to do a lot more work around here. But I can't because it's very, very wet. But I'm going to put a lot more work along the bottom and just really zoom in on the iPad and notice all the little bits of rubbish that are lying around on the marshes. Um, but this part of the boat here is kind of finished. I won't do a huge amount more to this. I didn't give it a big solid blue like it is in the photo because it, it just would have flattened everything out. So I've done this mm -hmm. part dark. And this part dark and left this light in the middle and then i'll probably do some hatching so when that's dry i'll get the pens out and i'll do some more hatching around there as well and darken this this needs to be darkened as well but i can't do it because it's a little bit damp yeah. yeah but that's kind of i suppose what one of my sketches would look like after typically after about an hour it just needs it needs more work so don't be fancy sitting around for 20 minutes just watching the paint dry because <laughs> that's <laughs> going to be really boring. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, no, and I think um, you still laid out a really good foundation. So 
you could honestly take a break, let it dry, and then come back to it, and people would be able to add on their own details later. Mm. Yeah. Since you added a lot to begin with, we saw how you used that very um, loose, sketchy way yeah. of applying the ink. This was lovely. Um, oh. Thank you. People are saying thank you for a wonderful demo. Thank you, Ian. Fabulous time. Amazing. Thank you for sharing. Um, quick question. Yeah. Um, what is the difference between just plain sketching and urban sketching to you? Asks um, Renate. I think I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Renate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow, that's a hard one. I mean, I don't really think there is any difference. I mean, sketching is, is sketching. So whether it's urban sketching, whether it's landscapes, whether you do like a still life, an object on a table, you're still, you're still sketching. And um, I mean, urban sketching to me reminds me of the community of people that do it as well, because it's, it's a big worldwide movement. I mean, there's mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of people now. And we have these symposiums every year. Well, we used to. <laughs> there's been nothing on this year, but hopefully we'll be them again. And then there's all the Facebook groups. So urban sketching to me is more of the community rather than what you do, because everyone's sketching and people are sketching different styles with different materials and they have different ways of doing it. Um, so yeah, urban sketching to me is very much the, the kind of the spirit and the community of, of people going out and doing it, doing it together. And it doesn't matter how good you are or how experienced you are but the fact is that you're doing it and you, you know you're recording the world and you you know you, you, you're making friends and you're getting out there and it's it's so good for you at the moment it's, it's good it's really good for your mental health as well yeah. yeah i love that that's amazing ian um well we're running out of time but thank you and people are still commenting on the chat this was terrific you're the best, Ian. Um, thank you for your time. People are already signing up for your workshop or they will as soon as this ends. So thank you. Oh, you're very, very welcome. And thank you to everyone who joined us. And can I just say bye to everybody and then have a lovely, lovely, peaceful Christmas and stay safe, keep well, look after yourselves and we'll get through this on the other side. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. That, that's a good way to end this. Well, thank you, everybody, and see you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>